been asking me and the rest of our team what is going on um how can they improve to get more jobs and if something is wrong so i just found a tip observe people use and it's been working so i've decided to share it to us on this platform so what is that tip hello everyone welcome to another episode with the express channel and in this channel we keep it real so today i've got a tip to share with you all so i've been getting a lot of messages on my dm and um people have really been worried because they've actually passed their nmc cbt exam they've passed their their ielts and what is left is for them to get a job and then for them to arrive in the uk which is the normal process many people use so they've applied to 50 jobs 100 jobs 150 jobs people keep applying and they've all been getting negative responses and it's really depressing to them so they've all some people have cried out to my dm asking me what can they do what can they do and what they are actually doing wrong that is um, that is the problem maybe they need to improve on their cv maybe they need to improve on just improve on anything just to get this job i know it can get quite depressing but the fact is that these days um there have actually been a decline a massive decline in which people are actually um, getting job responses unlike the earlier days whereby when you apply to at least 10 or 15 or 20 you might actually have gotten a job you understand but now some people might have to apply up to like 300 to 400 jobs and it's really painful so today i actually learned some tips in which some people have recently been using and it's working for them so i've decided to share it on this platform and see whosoever that think it will be beneficial to them or think they can actually use this method they can use it to um to to actually apply for job and come to the uk all right so stay tuned that we're going to get started on this topic this is the express channel like i earlier said and my name is stella and um, with this channel we talk about relocation and if it suits what you're really looking for to different country of your choice whereby you can learn more and improve on your professional development then don't forget to like and subscribe and then stay glued to this channel you learned so much on it now let's get started welcome back guys so um what is nmc nmc is called nursing and midwifery council and this is the body that actually regulate nurses they have different nmc so we have nmc nigeria nmc uk nmc ghana depending on where um which country you are you have the nmc nursing and midwifery council that governs the nursing activity in your country so what is actually the process of relocating to the uk as a nurse so the process of relocating to the uk is you write your cbt your home country you write your ielts then you then come to the uk and write oski you understand you come to the uk and write oski then it's after you've written their part oski which is their, like their part two exam then you get your pin to work as a nurse in the uk so normally what usually happens is when nurses overseas pass their um pass their cbt and pass their um and pass their ielts they begin to apply for job through jo website like the trick the job website through care homes the uk website through linkedin you see they begin to apply for jobs through all these ways at the moment they've gotten the job they come to the uk now once they've come to the uk their employer will place them on what is called the pre-registration nurse level so it's like the band four level because when nurses come to the uk to the nhs shows they start from band five so they come in on band four and then some trust will tell you okay we'll train you first then you go for your oski and so trust will tell you that you will begin working as but maybe you do like healthy assistant work before you before you before you get your pin you understand why some trust want to train you first so depending on what the trust wants to do for you and what is a trust to those don't know trust is like a big federal hospital so um it's either the hospital or the trust now or the care home trains you first or they tell you that you begin working as healthcare assistant but during that period you can't work as a nurse because you don't have your nursing pin yet so the thing is these days now people have been finding it difficult to actually get job due to the decline in job availability to immigrants these days especially for 
countries that are on red list decline so what do they normally do they try to apply for up to like 10 15 20 jobs a day just to at least get one it's not that people are not getting it but it's not as swift as you um as you get it and i personally have been getting so many messages on my dm asking people have been asking me and the rest of our team what is going on um how can they improve to get more jobs and if something is wrong so i just found the team observe people use and it's been working so i've decided to share it to us on this platform so what is that tip it's very simple so once you've actually passed your um your cbt exam and then you've passed your ielts if you have the financial capability you can actually come to the uk using a visitor's visa yes you can you can actually come to the uk using a visitor visa it's just like you process what the doctors use so what do the doctors use they write their plab one in their country home country in centers in their home country and then they have to come to the uk to write plab two because it's in the uk that they actually write the plab the same as the oski you write it in the uk and unlike nurses the doctors most of it they have to sponsor themselves the hospital don't sponsor them to write their plab unlike the nurses whereby your, the hospital actually sponsors you pays for your nmc or ski exam they're even the one that train you for the doctors the um the their hospital don't pay for them neither do they sponsor them so the doctors have to sponsor themselves to come to the uk prepare for their exam write the exam and pass it so after they pass the exam then they begin to apply for jobs so this is the other alternative for nurses why is getting difficult these days you can actually keep on applying for jobs but you can decide to apply for a visitor visa now someone will ask me are you eligible for a visitor visa yes you are eligible for a visitor visa because why you are just coming to the uk to stay for six months mind you a visitor visa lasts only for six months and there are rules and regulations where which you must abide by visitor visa which is number one you are not allowed to work you are not allowed to do any sort of work in the uk if you are found out that you are doing any type of work in the uk then you will be sent back and you might stand the mix of refusal to come to the uk for the next up to 10 years so you are not allowed to work so what you're allowed to do is when you come to that uk you can decide to you can go to a center an oski center which you must have actually booked while you are back home train yourself for like a month and then decide to um, apply for the exam and then you pass the exam after passing the exam you begin to apply for several jobs okay you begin to apply for several jobs and after passing um if you're able to get um the job within that period of time who knows they might decide to help you to get that tattoo visa and everything but the process is this is the process in which people are being using now and it's working for them so to apply for this visitor visa what do you need so i'm going to be reading it from my phone so i'm reading it from the gov.uk website to tell you that i'm not saying anything from my head but i'm telling you what is being written here so you are actually eligible to apply to come to the uk to write an exam on your own you can apply for a visitor visa so what do you need if you're coming to write an exam you will need a letter from the nursing and midwifery council confirming your OSCE test registration so that is to tell you that before you actually say you want to come to the uk to um say you want to come on the visitor visa you need to at least you must have applied for that exam while you are in your home country because you need a letter stating and confirming your OSCE test registration so you must have done the application and yes you can do the application from home or you do go you go online to NMC website and find the centers and then apply for the exam before you come to the UK okay next you will need your valid passport like we always say, if you want to relocate, you must have a valid passport. And I think by now you should have a valid passport because most of the time you can't write IELTS without the passport. Or you might even need your passport also to prove your identity when you are going to write your CBT. So you're going to need a valid passport. Some people also say that you might need a cover letter stating what you are coming to the UK to do and how long you stay in the UK. Well, some why some people say that... Um, you don't need it but anyway you can do one just to state what you're coming to do in the uk how long you are staying it really doesn't take any pain to do that so a cover letter might or may not be necessary 
but it's part of some of the requirements next you're going to be needing um you're going to be needing like your bank statement like three month bank statement because they want to see that you're actually getting money into your account that's if you are going to be self-funded so they want to know that you have enough money to cover yourself for the period of time you have to be in the uk so normally most of the time they'll, they'll need like at least 1280 pounds for them to see that yes you can cover yourself during this period but if you are going to be funded by let's say your family member or your parents they are going to be needing an affidavit affirming the declaration of the financial sponsorship so they are going to need an affidavit to say that okay yes we are the one that is going to sponsor this my son or we are the one that is going to sponsor my niece or my nephew to travel over to do their exam they will also be needing things like let's say your um your pay slip there's a monthly pay slip or they might be needing an evidence of your home address so something like let's say a light bill electricity bill just to state that this is where you are living in your country so these are just proof of identity and proof of home address so these are documents you are going to be needing when you are applying for visitors visa also going to be needing a confirmation of your accommodation in the uk so they want to see and a confirmation that this is where you are going to be staying while you are in the UK or they want to see an invitation letter from a friend or a family member whom you will be staying with so let's say that you have a family or you have a family friend you want to stay with while you are in the UK they will need to send to type a brief letter saying that they are the one you are going to stay with or let's say you booked a hotel or an airbnb they don't want to see a proof that you've actually booked and the period of time which you booked to stay in that particular place you might also be needing proof of the fact that you are going to return back to your country so what i've actually heard which is a tip from what people have been doing especially from the doctors because i know so many doctors that have, been, that have actually traveled to the uk for their exam so they normally pay like a return ticket where they are actually booking their flights and this actually helps them when they get to the immigration office when trying to cross into the uk because they want to see that actually these people have booked a return ticket meaning that they will actually go back to their country after the exam and after within the period of six months because if not then they will see that all oh, these people actually want to come and stay and don't want to go back to their country as planned so these are documents you are going to be needing when you come so let's say you, so this is january now and you apply to write your exam in february or march that's your oski so while you are actually in your home country you've called the center in the uk that you are going to train let's say you book your exam to be written in march okay and you've actually booked the exam in march you've called the, the company you're going to train with in the uk that you're going to train with them for the period of one month while you're in the uk so mind you you still have from january february march april may june six months to stay in the uk and you must return within that six months not after the six months within that six months okay so now you've prepared you got to the uk you've actually also booked your accommodation before coming to the uk because you need to book your accommodation like i listed these are evidence you need to provide when you are coming to the uk so you booked your accommodation where can you book your accommodation you can try spare homes.uk you can try booking airbnb at booking.com or airbnb.com you can go there and book your hotels or your airbnb and stay there but all this takes money so you need to actually be able to pay for all that but someone will ask me what is the financial implication i will get to that so if actually booked your accommodation you've booked for your exam you book for your training center and you're part of the uk you've passed your exam you've written it and you've passed it in us in um in march so you still have like april may and you need to return before your stuff expires in june so within that period you can actually also be applying for um job opportunities while you're in the uk and by the time you've applied for and most trust see the extent to which you have gone through and how you are serious to get this job you start at higher chances of getting this exam because now you'll be having a pin remember most of the time when you apply for a trade job they'll ask do you have a pin you say no because you don't have nmc pin but this time now you'll be having an nmc pin and this have an advantage you might the type you have an nmc pin they'll be so happy to sponsor you with tier 2 visa or like when you don't have an nmc pin and they know they have to go through all the process of training you and you 
they will, it will be more costly for them but when they know that you are you have actually taken the pain of coming to the uk and doing all this just to clear up and then you know it's just sponsorship which they need you will have greater chances of actually of actually getting these jobs and then let's say even if you don't get it before you're actually before your six months elapse and you go back you still have greater opportunities because now you have the pain and which means that you have greater chance of getting job and i'm very sure within few months you will see yourself in working already in the UK. so this is another route you can actually follow instead of just staying back and waiting and then getting depressed while you are at home in your own country now what is the cost of this visitor visa what are the costs involved in the process so to apply for visitor visa they said this is from the gov.uk website a standard visitor visa is 100 pounds for a maximum length of stay for six months which is normally what people will do sir for an exam which is 100 pounds for six months now that is one of the costs now how much is OSCE? The cost of NMT OSCE is £794. That makes it a total of what? £894. Now, what is the cost of actually preparing for OSCE in OSCE Center? So, the cost of OSCE Centers can vary from £300 to about £600 depending on which center. So, all you just need to do is to look for several um, on, um, centers in the UK and then apply to I'm going to be dropping some links because you can get some in London, you can get some in Liverpool. You can get some in Manchester, different OSCE centers, even in Birmingham, just for you to apply. Even give them a call, send an email to them, and they will tell you what is the cost and what are their rules and regulations and terms and conditions of their training centers, and then you can book with them. Let's talk about how much can you book, um, how much you can book for Airbnb. So for Airbnb, in let's say you're booking in places like Liverpool, let's leave London now, because London you're going at let's say, um. 70 pounds for a night or even more than that at times depending on where you're staying so let's say you're going to places like birmingham or you even have a friend that you guys apply together like we always say don't hide this kind of information for people let them know so you and your friend can actually apply for this visa together and so you guys can merge and make it a bit cost effective for both of you so you can decide to even rent a place while you are actually um, in your country you decide to rent a place through the spare homes or decide to book an airbnb where you guys can actually share this cost okay so what is the cost of actually um of like a night we're going to like let's say 35 pounds to about 40 pounds or 50 pounds between that range and then when you check okay how much can you actually pay continuously or for the period of time in which you have to stay in the uk you understand then you will know how much you actually need so let's say about 1500 to 2000 pounds if you have this like i said it depends if you have this money you can set to take this risk and then travel pass your exam and come back or travel process and before you know it you will actually get a job that is a tattoo visa which will allow you to stay in the uk or a skilled worker visa which will allow you to stay in the uk so guys that is all i have for you so you can decide to follow this route or if you have a friend who is already in the uk they can actually stay and um, sponsor your let's say let you stay with them for a period of time maybe you might even pay them just a little bit of money to stay with you if it's actually allowed depending on the terms and condition with their own landlord so they can still you can stay with them for a period of time and then luckily you get the job but even if you don't get it while you're still in the uk don't even stress yourself because you have greater opportunity now that you have the nmcp okay so guys that's all i have for you today and i hope and i wish you guys all the best with this process i know it's going to work and i believe that it's going to be the best way for you especially if you have been in the uk and been in your home country for a long time and then your um, let's say your ielts is almost getting expired or your um, cbt um, exam which lasts also two years almost getting expired you can quickly try this route and instead of instead of just staying back home and not knowing what to do and just keep getting tired and depressed thank you very much and 
if you like our video don't forget to like and subscribe and please share with your friends because like we always say it pays to help others so people don't have this information and they are just there their, their cbt expired they have to write another one and then they begin to think should they still write it is it still worth it or is it not it's worth it like i always say it's worth it it pays a lot to me relocation changed my life i don't know about you but i believe that it can also change someone else's life out there so thank you for being with us and bye for now